good morning good afternoon good evening um, the folks and thanks for joining uh, ampler global inks uh, webinar series one uh, design thinking for 4.0 uh, my name is anurban badacharya and i would like to um, introduce this session but before uh, doing that uh, i would like to first start with a uh, quote from the manufacturing uh, leadership council board um, very well respected in the uh, manufacturing uh, industrial uh, supply chain ecosystem where they have uh, really recognized us as a strategic partner for the industry 4.0 journey to come for small to medium to large organizations. Uh, the, the, uh, the main message that I would like to pass is we did not leave AI, uh, which is uh, artificial intelligence. We have brought it as a driver for Ampler Global Inc's uh, and its clients' success. And we would like to cover a specific topic, uh, which is design-led industry 4.0 uh, uh, solution concepts today. And I would uh, like to introduce the, the panelists. Uh, uh, Anurban Bhattacharya, that's me. Um, I lead the organization. I'm the CEO and founder of Ampel uh, Global Link. Uh, we have uh, Sonia Banerjee. Uh, she's the VP of Innovation and Design Thinking uh, for Ampel Global Link. And uh, one of our uh, advisors, uh, Yako Van Neden, uh, he would not be able to join the call today. He had a last minute co conflict today, but um, he has, of course, blessed us and endorsed us for this uh, for this webinar. And thanks very much, Yako, for for your coaching. A quick uh, storyline here. Uh, of course, we went through a quick line of introduction here. Then we will talk about very very briefly about Amplo. Uh, what is Industry 4.0? Uh, and then we'll talk about, of course, design thinking. We'll bring the design thinking and Industry 4.0 together in the value creation and uh, 4.0 led design thinking uh, as, a, as a topic that we put how it's creating impact in the ecosystem. Uh, we do have a workshop, a uh, couple of days of workshop in October middle. Um, uh, ideally, uh, the date uh, is tentatively fixed for October 18th and October 19th, uh, Friday and Saturday. Um, and uh, we will talk about that workshop as well, where after this webinar, the link will be up to uh, register yourself if you're interested. And uh, welcome, would like to welcome you to the to the workshop. Uh, there's a lot of fun in it, and we'll talk about it as uh, today as well. And then uh, logistics, a little bit for the workshop, and we'll we'll finish with some Q and A. <laughs> Before we get into uh, the core of Industry 4.0-led design thinking, or maybe design think design-led Industry 4.0 uh, as a, as a palindrome, right? Uh, it's um, one thing that we are uh, witnessing as we are in the fourth revolution of the uh, industry ecosystem. It's all about how we can shift from a uh, product mentality, uh, cost center mentality to a profit center, product services, solutions as a service, servitization, which is productization of the services, that servitization, and how we would be able to uh, cope up with the demand for production, uh, productionization, which is product, productionizing the services after the product goes to a customer or a client, and how do you consume it? So consumerization has been completely, as I call it, uh, Amazonized or Uberized right now, be it B2B, business to business, or be, be it B2C, business to consumer. Um, everything is experience focused. And if you really see the thing here, intelligent enterprise, connected enterprise, a workforce reimagined is extremely important that we go through a fourth revolution reskilling program, uh, especially millennials coming in and how they're affecting the ecosystem positively, along with 30 years of engineers coexisting with them. Uh, platform without technology, uh, digitization is next impossible. Um, Internet of Things, which is the heart of the digitization, connected, um, connecting the world. 
And of course, how do you drive this to an outcome economy, which is uh, the crux of consumerization uh, and user of digitization outcome can only consume it um, and they will consume it the way they, when they want, how they want, and they would, would like to pay the, for the service. So they don't actually, do, they do not want to worry about where is the bottoms up infrastructure, or, or how many services are there, they just want the experience. Just like a iPhone, iPhone usage. That's where uh, B2B, B2C, B2B2C is going. To uh, support the Industry 4.0 ladder in the connected world, uh, there's a method of the madness. Uh, ultimately, the goal is to get the new business models. So when I talk about new business models, it's about there's an example of a manufacturing we have given here. It's an example, of course. We can go and cover other verticals, other sectors, other services too. But if you really see from a new revenue model, new business model perspective, uh, how we can really save cost for innovation, and with that innovation, we open a new line of business. And as we open a new line of business, how that is consumerized. The second concept is within the existing business where we are not doing a new business model, how do I improve revenue? That's new revenue model within the existing business. The two concepts are very prevalent in Industry 4.0, and I do believe that both of these concepts are very much accepted if it's experience-led, design-led, persona-led, outside-in-led, because inside-out is always there. But now, if you shift to a manufacturing floor, it's all about experience, because it's all about exception-based manufacturing execution. The normal job operations are being done by the robots. That's where the trend is going. And all the workers are being reskilled and they're getting into much more exception based operations. With that being as said, as we introduce the concept of industry for auto, uh, I think it's uh, good to go through about, go through about Ample of Global Link in a nutshell very quickly. Um, we are basically uh, trying to build a connected strategy. Uh, and when it's a connected strategy, strategy, productizing strategy. So that's the reason when we uh, opened up the webinar, we had a slogan out there, Strategy 2.0. And uh, Strategy 1.0 has been very much into, um, I would say, if I may use the word, white collar. Um, but Strategy 2.0 that we want to uh, redefine is how we can bring that productization and business, we empower the business to do strategy with the minimalistic input, input from uh, external help to do strategy consulting, right? And then uh, one thing that we also have done is um, we have taken an approach towards uh, building a product around that, and the product name is uh, Diva. Uh, it's it's a, that's it, it's it's a trademark by Ampler. It's a data uh, industry visualization and uh, analytics. And this product has five modules, and each of the modules is um, uh, they're uh, they're like they're connected, and it, it does uh, nothing but strategy, uh, benchmarking, process decomposition, modeling, uh, KPI analysis, design thinking, and roadmap. So this is um, a flagship product for us, but also does some related services along with the product. Uh, we do um, a lot of uh, like uh, design-led, uh, value execution-led, uh, data monetization programs, uh, analytics programs, and of course, as you will see that we, uh, we are big into training and development as well. So we have some related services around the product Deva, and, uh, and the Deva is nothing but uh, strategy in a box. A quick uh, horizontal and uh, sector is covered by Ampler Global Link. I'm not going to read through the slide, but for, it's for your review. Um, if you really see from the left, um, the Deva is our flagship product, as I said. Five modules, uh, related services. Uh, we do have very two strategic services on e-marketplace and cost center to profit center. Um, one of the consumerization models, most of the cost centers are moving to profit centers and also each organization wants to be a part of the marketplace to exchange uh, data. Uh, blockchain is a great example. 
um, and how they would become a part of the ecosystem so that uh, every piece of the dollar uh, revenue can be shared by the uh, organization, by the contributors and the consumers of the marketplace. And of course, on the right side, we cover three main sectors, but of course, the other sectors are um, coming up as we speak. Uh, and one key element in the slide that I would like to cover is corporate social responsibility delivery. We are big into uh, consulting with organizations what they would like to do on the corporate social responsibility side of the house. It's, it's a marketing concept and how it is related to Deva or services because at the end of the day, when somebody asks us, hey, how could you take this money and split into five uh, ecosystem green projects for corporate social responsibility, we do benchmark. And that's where benchmarking um, benchmarking sits on CSR. And we always have the, the, pool, uh, the colleagues and peers of mine and Amplo. We are very much in a, in a mode to impact. Um, short, medium, large programs, and uh, um, we would like to definitely leave back a legacy where we can uh, create a repeatable model in corporate social responsibility, especially for uh, developing countries. Uh, uh, I talked about this product a little bit, uh, so it's basically uh, the five modules. You see it here, uh, assessment, it's a benchmarking, process decomposition, KPI, design thinking, and roadmap. We specifically will talk about uh, the services side of design thinking, but design thinking is also part of the product. And we have uh, certain deliverables coming out. And if you are not wanting the product, we can dismantle the product and do services as well. <clears throat> so um, as we get into the value creation to design thinking, uh, and before I hand over to Sonia, I would like to cover uh, why it is important to understand industry 4.0 and design thinking coexisting together. So in this slide, what you see is, is the fourth revolution on the, on, the, on the left side. Okay, I'm not defining that. But just to stay competitive, one of the biggest element that the, we, we would like to, I, I should call it a puzzle to solve, is are we really a 4.0 organization? Are we really, uh, do we want to be a 4.0 organization? Or I'm happy with 3.0? Or you know what, I'm not even at a 1.0. Can I go and directly leapfrog to 4.0? Those questions are being asked by our clients, by our prospects, by our advisors, partners. And what we do is we handhold that journey, of course, to product developer benchmarking. But, uh, but if suppose somebody just wants to do design thinking, without worrying about Deva, the product, how do I basically take transforming the operations, the products and services and experience? So at the end of the day, when I see automation, automation was also there in 1980s or 1970s or 1990s, which was not there, is the connected automation. And that's where once we say connected, um, experience is not an option anymore, it's a must. So um, some statistics around Industry 4.0 and how it is a crucial to be competitive and embrace 4.0 and without uh, thinking, I'm using the term thinking and I will end um, in a mathematical model, lots of things are in the braces, design thinking, agile thinking, uh, rapid thinking, um, uh, lean thinking, right? So all these things have introduced the concept today. Um, it's about um, understanding the numbers also. If I can help you quantify uh, the number that what's happening in the next three years to four years to five years, it is extremely crucial to realize that 84% plan to increase their investment in factory connectivity. So factory automation is a big, big place. Am I only talking manufacturing? Maybe yes, but is it impacting the whole value chain? Absolutely, yes, because if I cannot produce smartly, I cannot sell. If I cannot produce smartly, I cannot have my revenue coming in. Right? So this is a very crucial cost center, which is slowly moving to profit center. There are other numbers, too, you can take a look. So goals and gaps, um, some smiley faces and some, as I call it, a grumpy face, right? So uh, 
quick statistics here. So 89% of uh, uh, the, uh, in, information efficiency through data standards. So we talked about a bit of our service and data monetization. Very crucial that we understand data, but how are we to understand data if I don't know the personas who would be using that data? So it comes back to design thinking again. If you really see uh, the core design thinking message, and then you will also see how we have amplified it um, to pass that message on data standards, data security, any kind of um, uh, strategy that we are doing, why it is important to be a personal led uh, in industry 4.0. And of course, again, the numbers are there and uh, you, this will be available for after uh, the session. So you can feel free to see the recording as well. A few brands in the ecosystem are the champions of the champions, as I call it, right? Uh, Daimler, Intel, Boeing, the numbers are speaking by itself. Uh, Thermo Fisher, Ca Caterpillar, Honeywell, Metronic, Cisco, Boston Scientific. No doubt. I mean, they're also learning, but sometimes when I walk uh, uh, in the hallway of some of these uh, prospects and clients, um, I do feel that uh, maybe they're already in 5.0, so, right? So Caterpillar can be can say that, hey, we're at 5.0, a Cisco may say we're at 4.5, right? But, but why it's important to be still in that ecosystem of 4.0, why these organizations still not claiming that I'm at 5.0, I'm still 4.0, because they're working with their partners heavily who may be 1.0. In the ecosystem, uh, you can't progress too fast. You have to be in that ecosystem to bring everybody together and move forward. Otherwise, you will not have the best uh, maybe partners in the ecosystem to even support you. So uh, they are very advanced, but at the same time, um, the slogan here is, um, we are Ford Auto Company like these, these, uh, these logos. Uh, quick uh, uh, gaping skill gap. It's about um, uh, a part of the, if you remember the first uh, the consumeriz consumerization slide, um, so it is, uh, we talked about a workforce uh, reimagined and this is what we're talking about, that as we get into the ecosystem of Ford Auto, uh, extremely important to uh, have the right side of the brain and left side of the brain uh, kind of equated yeah. right a bit. And so uh, like transformative, transformative skills are equally important as soft, softer skills and vice versa. So if somebody is there and a lot of um, uh, repeatable work are happening. People are coming out and saying, okay, we don't need this, so need this uh, operator to sit here anymore. Let, let us reskill him or her. So that's very important. That's only possible when you're going through a lot of um, um, design-led, personal-led understanding because to get into a 4.0 era and not ha and really having a refined uh, job profile or workforce it's very important that everybody gets on the same page and then only everybody can move faster. And, in, um, and, and uh, talked about again manufacturing as an example here. Uh, if you really see the six uh, pillars of the tenants here, um, we can talk about one of these, like let's say decentralization, where even manufacturing is embracing blockchain. Blockchain is one of the most successful decentralized solution in the, in the economy right now. Um, if you really see the service orientation of, uh, we talked about uh, servitization or serviceification, about how product companies are moving to services companies or solution as a service companies, they're redefining their boundaries and uh, understanding that, okay, why design thinking is important and those redefinition of the boundaries. Um, modularity is extremely important. How do I make it modular and make it repeatable? Uh, real time, cr very critical. And of course, interoperability, which is how can I use this laterally? How can I enable machine and others to uh, communicate uh, in the network very quickly? And uh, in the 4.0 era, it's not only about data, it's about insights. And it's not only about insights, it's how the insights are connecting back to the machines and making them a living object. If the machine can stop by itself, it becomes cognitive. And once it becomes cognitive, a checkbox is checked that, hey, now I'm at 4.0 because the machine can stop by itself and it doesn't need the torture, um, the right spirit, I'm saying this, by the operators to meet their bonus numbers. Um, so the machine needs rest. And once the machine has an optimal rest, the maturity of the machine and the life of the machine increases and automatically your asset management cost goes down. The machine life goes up. And now the machine is moving from uh, schedule maintenance-based to a 
cycle maintenance based. Every 250 runs, I will stop. No one can tell me when, when not to stop. And machine is becoming live, and that's cognitive, that's Fordado, that's experience, that's all are happening through industry uh, design thinking. So uh, with that being said, I'm going to hand over to Sonia. She's our VP of uh, Innovation. And uh, Sonia, the floor is yours. Thank you, Anir. Uh, that was fantastic. I'll take, in, uh, take on from here. Um, so uh, before we uh, move, uh, you know, I want to uh, talk about experience. And Anir has spoken about experience in relation to uh, Industry 4.0. Experience is uh, a combination of functionality served and emotions felt. Value is derived when experience is positively impactful. To create such an experience, it's crucial to negate pain points, add value that is beneficial and adds to delight, such that it is congruent to the goal of the project. Having said that, let's look at a few examples of experience fails in order to appreciate a uh, human-centered approach. Uh, yes, the first example up there. Now, this is a functional board, but this poses a serious user challenge. It's functional, but it's confusing to use. Now imagine transplanting this horror to a pivotal persona on a factory floor and how that could reduce operational efficiencies. Moving on to the next example. Now, this is a simple keyboard but observe how the arrows have been placed to impede usage. Now, a thoughtful, uh, you know, being thoughtful really is important uh, aside functionality to deliver that experience. Let's move to the next fail of an example, which is a design in a silo. Don't we experience some of the civic experiences uh, in our lives? I want you to note how this screams lack of usage uh, knowledge specifically, where user insight is totally overlooked. Uh, yeah, user experience is one thing, the design is something completely different. Moving to the next one, well, this is a case of market myopia, isn't it? Now, this is a lost market opportunity, possibly lack of market segmentation or an inability to spot an opportunity in the market that could be tapped by redesigning an accessory as simple like the remote. Uh, going forward, having seen the fails, let's appreciate some of the delights. Now, this is a delight. This is designed for convenience. It's the same product, same functionality. But the usage-centric packaging delivers a value experience that brings in repeat purchase. Moving to the next one. Now, this is... Uh, Fantastic, a wonderful way of brand retention through delivering a utility-driven experience where the packaging is upcycled to create a value that differentiates the brand, right? I mean, this is wine in a package that we kind of throw away. But hey, the delightful experiences you can actually unfold to store your wine, and that increases brand memorability. That leads to a fantastic brand affinity. Moving to the next. And finally, this I call the master stroke on indulgent user experience that combines convenience, utility, and delight. A simple butter, uh, you, know, uh, you know, small packaging butter, but where the lid is used uh, as a utility service. Who wouldn't want to, you know, carry this in their pocket again and again, right? Okay. Um, having said that, let's explore uh, what propels such an outcome. How businesses think processes on service and manufacturing to align to a stated experience. And that's where we come to, uh, Anil has touched based on this, but yes, there are various kinds of thinking and processes that exist, uh, you know, in the ecosystem in organizations today. While agile-based execution is focused on improving the business and customer value, it is also iterative and adaptive. While lean thinking focuses on improving flow through process of elimination, critical and lateral thinking help with creative solutions, latter helping with reimagination. Now, these can be used circumstantially, sometimes concurrently, to adapt to a problem-solution paradigm. Note. Um, how these processes 
help with solutions uh, to a defined set of goals. But uh, what does one do when one faces an unknown goal, an unknown solution? And that is where we take on a holistic thinking process, a holistic thinking approach. And that's where design thinking really comes in play. Let's go to the next one. Now, design thinking, really, a non-linear, a layer opener, iterative and immersive human-centric process, unveiling innovative and differentiable experiences that creates value. Let's look at some of the attributes. Yeah, it's a, it's a design thinking is really a path of discovery and a route to reimagine and innovate. It is iterative, it is adaptive and collaborative at its core. It effectively tackles ambiguity often faced in real world at crossroads of reinvention like we have in Industry 4.0 now. The crux of the solution lies in user centricity through empathy and problem identification, as well as to rightfully interpret insights and then ideate to innovate such that it is business viable and technologically feasible, leading to rapid prototyping, closing on feedback loop. That's a mouthful, but I promise you, when you engage in this process, it's nothing short of fun. So I want to over here take a moment to thank IDEO, which created the design thinking process way back in 1990s, laying a foundational practice upon which we have adapted uh, an amplified way that is oriented towards Industry 4.0. Going to the next uh, one, therefore, thinking design for Industry 4.0. And that really is value creation for the, the end user. It's, it's the experience that counts. So on one hand, if Industry 4.0 is all about value creation and technology, then what enables that? As, as Ani beautifully took you through, it's really uh, design thinking as a starter path uh, that, uh, that is uh, really the enabler to value creation, which incidentally is the fulcrum of Industry 4.0. This approach of enabling leads to unique value experience for the user. Now a transition, uh, sorry, a stepping stone to design thinking first and foremost, and uh, we proceed to the next slide, are some of the tools. And first and foremost for that is the mindset. Yeah. Now a mindset that is user-centric or customer-centric, a mindset that is curious, a mindset that desires clarity in ambiguity, that is data-oriented, open to imagination and rethinking, a mindset that understands feedback and is open to adaptability is absolutely crucial uh, for this process to begin and to engage in this process. However, this is aided by tangible tools essentially helping you interpret user insights through contextual and effective probing, connect with empathy, benchmark, and then embark to create user journeys that really create value. I want to show you in detail how at Ample we have adapted design thinking oriented to uh, Industry 4.0. But before that, let's look at ideas foundational process comprising of five pillars of the tenets, that is to empathize, define, ideate, prototype, and test, where iteration is really inherent to the process. I'm gladly presenting the Amplo design thinking structure, a unified and holistic process to create and execute value to a user journey such that it is business viable and technologically feasible. Now, to achieve that, it is critical to start with an epic, uh, which is a stated issue at hand, and dive into understanding the use, user through what we call REPI, a process of empathy, starting with bonding and 
eliciting response, which is really a method acting your end user through a process of delayering to generate deeper and robust user insight. Observe, interview, and converse with sets of user personas and their use cases. This is followed uh, with a process to enact, which is really to get a first hand native experience of the user personas, thereby understanding their network of influences, both direct and indirect, that impacts user behavior, which in turn impacts a business. Empathy really is the glue to bond and elicit such enriching insights. We follow this up with a process of revealing, and that is really uh, mapping the current user journey vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the real-life user journey vis-a-vis -vis what is expected by that user. We put this together to really imbibe, that is to synthesize, to assimilate, analyze, and decide by attributing insights to uh, the customer journey that is expected. Now, this process really is concurrent and often iterative with contextual probing, which is the next tenet, which is uh, what and we divide this in two parts, really. Uh, we deconstruct the problem. Uh, we help to envision the goal, thus bringing clarity to parading ambiguity. Now, this helps uh, to then contextually ideate, which is the third tenet, what we call directional idea boarding. Uh, you will note how we have contextualized, uh, you know, everything is in context. So you don't go here by or by ideating, and that's what you usually do. But that is where, uh, and that is what we call directional idea boarding, to jumpstart the inner Picasso in you, helping you reimagine and rethink to ideate, to innovate. The next obvious step, and that's the fourth. Tenet. The next obvious step is to prioritize the ideas generated objectively through a lens of value creation and goal, uh, evaluating their business viability and feasibility in execution. However, ideation without execution is akin to just daydreaming, isn't it? And that is where our agile team, or what we term as the value execution team, and that aspect really takes over to seamlessly execute an idea of delivery through rapid, prototype, uh, through rapid prototyping with finish. Uh, that is uh, Ample's holistic approach uh, to design thinking for Industry 4.0. I, uh, I will give this back to Anir, and I will hand it over to take you through some of the use cases, uh, some very exciting use cases which are coming up for you to synthesize this better. Over to you, Anish. Uh, thank you, Sonia. Um, so uh, just a, a transposition of the, that half semicircle slide we showed you. It's ideally uh, taking into a journey of value execution. That's what um, uh, I would say a nomenclature that we have uh, created for uh, the PMO as I call program office management, and the new name is the uh, agile agile execution. So um, we're calling it value execution. At the end of the day, it's all about value, right? And it's inside out, outside in value. So uh, the model of design thinking here in a pre-session, in-session, and end a sprint, you're basically talking about going through a complete epic, as we call it, epic and user scenarios and sub-user scenarios and making sure that it's completely prioritized for the next n quarters to come or n years to come and make sure that you know that when you are doing these projects or programs what's the level of complexity it is let's talk about the fidelity of the data the fidelity of the cost um, the reusability uh, how it will be responsive or not, and uh, um, really covering process people and technology in the mix. And that hasn't changed in the last many, many decades to, uh, that has passed by and many decades to come. 
So um, empathy, uh, define, ideate, converge, standard uh, uh, design-led process. The one main thing that we would like to pass um, a message from this slide is, it's all about how do I take a prototype and make sure that it's scalable, valuable, and it also brings a repeatable, closed-loop performance back to uh, learning. So anything that we are doing here, it should be um, it, sh it should make sure that it has a closed loop back and we can improve the next program. So leadership change management, portfolio program management, infrastructure readiness for any innovation labs, everything is led by design, design, design thinking and agile thinking. And that's where the convergence of agile and design are happening. And it exactly fits into uh, the, the industry 4.0 uh, platter. So all are coming together in the fourth revolution. A couple of uh, use cases that I would like to share. So one of the um, use cases that I was a part of, the team was also part of, was the um, was a med devices company based out of Minneapolis. So how do we take a simple, a very simple um, B2C business to consumer um, uh, pacemaker, or maybe one is pacemaker, second is a, a diabetic care as well, it's generally a consumer touch. It's a B2C. But when that B2C is, that C, consumer, is on, is leveraging the product or using the product of this med devices company, how you can bring the ecosystem together with that one pulse of the heartbeat? Like, how do we take that data set and make sure, I may say it very rudely, everybody is making money from it, right, with that heartbeat. So heartbeat is also not free nowadays in Industry 4.0, right? Uh, so based on the pulse, I measure how he or she is performing, what's needed, what's coming up, if the pulse is below going down to 60, uh, what happens, uh, what should be triggered, how the 911 or the rescue operation should happen, the first operation should happen, where the manuals are, is it a curated solution, is it on the online, everything. And then you run analytics on it from uh, payers, providers, policymakers, um, uh, pricing, uh, everything, all the four P's that I talked about from a health sciences ecosystem perspective. But at the end of the day, it, where it boils down to is that customer journey has been mapped from an outside in view, right? When the person is feeling that, hey, I should be having a better breathing and a hard, hard, hard beat, it's, it's below 65, 60. I go to the, to the uh, table, uh, surgery table, and have a pacemaker in, inside me. How it talks back to the doctor, how it talks back to the, uh, uh, the, uh, the nurses, the patient uh, uh, itself, is a huge, huge experience-led um, solution. And ideally what happened is a connected journey, uh, connected ecosystem, um, it's all about uh, personification of each of the users in the mobile, iPad, uh, laptop, wherever uh, desktop we're using. It. So it's a pretty interesting uh, case uh, that uh, we are part of. And then innovation is key, right? With this learning, how do you innovate? The second one I will cover a very uh, for, from a high tech manufacturing company in Bay Area, right? So that's basically what's the talk about um, an order management, order execution process. How do I make sure that there are some aha moments, there are some equanimous moments, and there's some opportunity moments or lack of delight moments or pain points? So it's another representation of uh, taking the end-to-end -end, uh, configure to order process, and even in a, I call it a little bit drier process than the previous example, how do you make sure your experience is solid? How do I configure uh, 79 lines of bills of materials to configure one price where the user only cares for one price? The user doesn't care for 79 lines that the internal organization has it. How do I make sure that that user gets one price from the 79 lines all rolled up or imploded up to one price? And that needs a lot of experience mapping. But when it goes to the user, User sees or witnesses a very simple, very simple, very easy to use responsive UI, but it doesn't come 
uh, overnight. It needs a lot of design thought process, innovation thought process, agile thought process to make it happen. Think about every role has some price rolls up with some discounts, and you have an order management sales order going up with a very simple experience for the consumer to collect the order and use it. And uh, there's a lot of internal journey that the organization has gone through with design thinking. So uh, one thing that we'd like to do is to, uh, before we open up for Q&A, we'd like to wrap up uh, with the um, workshop that's coming up. And it's scheduled right now for October 18th and 19th uh, in Piscataway, New Jersey. And uh, please uh, feel free to join the workshop. And it will be uh, uh, it, it will be all over the um, social media and internet. So you will find uh, various levels of uh, pricing, uh, early bird pricing, uh, and uh, we are always there to uh, help you. If you have any question, you can reach out to your our help desk. But uh, I would like to hand over to Sonia to finish this presentation with this slide, and then we'll open up for Q and A. Thank you, Anir. Uh, thank you for taking us through the use cases. Uh, uh, now, uh, all I would ask the participants are, are you intrigued? Uh, and if you are intrigued and positively excited to be ready for Industry 4.0, of course, we have something very exciting to offer, and that's the workshop. Our forthcoming uh, immersive workshop on being Industry 4.0 ready with design thinking Anir has already uh, spoken about the venue. It is uh, scheduled for October 18th and 19th. We have designed this foundational workshop, keeping you in mind. This will be a practice-based, interactive, and immersive le learning for maximum learning retention. You will learn the individual tenets of design thinking and its deep integration with Industry 4.0 with use cases. Uh, application of design thinking in real world uh, uh, industry 4.0 use cases, thus helping you apply the foundations of design thinking at your workplace. There will be bonus benefits for you uh, because uh, by doing this workshop, by attending this workshop, you will be part of our budding design thinkers uh, for industry 4.0 community. You would also get special offers on subsequent training and events aside early bird uh, registrations that Anir spoke about. Uh, we will give you credit annotations on authentic contributions, if any. Uh, you will also be given a certification of participation and the learning material will be available online. So join us on a path of discovery and a route to innovation and be ready to transform the Industry 4.0 landscape on 18th and 19th October. We will send out the details to all registered attendees uh, of this webinar. Um, we will open, uh, I, I, I do see uh, some, uh, oh, I see lots of questions. Fantastic. Um, great. So uh, let, me, uh, let me open uh, the session for Q&A. And if you have any further, we already have some questions. If you have more, please post them. We will take the first question, and that is, why do you think Amplo's design thinking approach is different to uh, than standard design thinking? Anir, would you like to take this question? Uh, absolutely, I can. I would like to go back uh, to the slide uh, and would like to answer with a visual in mind. Um, so of course uh, we have taken the base with uh, from the from the idea idea uh, the discovery or invention of the design thinking. What we have done, we have really understood or went deep. Uh, we have gone deep into um, understanding certain personas which are very uh, much at the floor, very much at the. Um, very, very much in the rural, right? Where it's like maybe not many, um, not many people even touching the connected experience. Design thinking is, of course, experience, but to take it to a connected experience, I think where we have um, modified it, as I call it, amplified it, 
and the value to and the, just to answer the question first is like what's the difference difference is if you really see the size slides right you have five sorry there's five boxes here empathy define idea prototype and test everything is there here too but one thing we are doing is we are uh, bonding much stronger and we are also defining a concept called contextual probing which is we can start with a big epic but how can i narrow it down to a context and then be on the design thinking for the food order so i think where our key attributes are is keeping 4.0 contextual probing in mind so everything we are doing is contextual probing towards 4.0 have you benchmarked can you decompose your process and really score yourself where you stand can you really know in the next 5 years what kpis you would like to define for your outcomes uh, i mean have you done any kind of roadmap exercise so that's where it's very 4.0 driven these use cases will be the part of the session as well i don't want to steal the thunder from the session but that's a, that's the main difference i think i think the main difference is um uh it's very much into making you realize what you need to do to become a food or food or organization and that's true uh, for any any profile joining the workshop even somebody who is under uh, 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 like having an undergrad and just have two years of experience to a senior manager everybody will relate what they they have to play a role to create that connected food or experience that's where we have specialized and amplify the uh, design thinking coursework thank you anil uh, we have uh, more questions and i'll read out the next one what is the unique value proposition of ampler global's think design thinking workshop i think i can try and answer this question uh, i have uh, covered this but i'd love to you know kind of uh, taking uh, further or extending from anil's uh, uh, discussion point before uh, the forthcoming workshop will be solely oriented towards uh, industry 4.0 with design thinking as a springboard you will understand individual design thinking pillars via lens of industry 4.0 use cases you will further work on uh, a project on organization maturity assessment uh, to get an in-depth in-depth clarity on application of an industry 4.0 topic uh, this is what i think is unique to this workshop um taking further we have some more questions and we have some time left so i will attempt to answer those questions as well uh our third question really is do you think your design thinking use cases uh be laterally leveraged uh anil would you like to uh, take this question absolutely absolutely sonia so uh, great question so of course uh, if you really see from a med devices world to a uh, example that i gave from a cons consumer world uh, the consumer is in a digital commerce world nothing to do with med devices though uh, distribution is purely supply chain um product that goes inside the heart is product engineering so the short answer is any work or even the next one that we talked about pricing and, and anything that we are doing here or order management order management is needed for every sector so this the use cases can be leveraged um, or the learning from the use cases or the um, design led approach from amplo can be leveraged uh, across the sectors um, i think from a value stream perspective procurement shared services pricing order management supply chain manufacturing asset management um so customer relationship management um uh, sales marketing uh, all our uh, finance everything has to go through an experience for auto um so i think this is something that can be absolutely uh, laterally used and the model that uh, sonia covered if i go back there this is a pretty a uh, plug and play model i and i call it a 80 20 rule in every sector that we are supporting this 
80% postponement or standardization, standard operating methods, and 20% very specific to that industry. And that 20% is nothing but empathy. And empathy is all over the place. I'm not saying only 20%, don't get me wrong, but that empathy is different from uh, med devices to a uh, uh, cast iron or a mining company. But the attribute of empathy, to empathize in a situation is absolutely common. So yes, there needs to be a little bit of sectorization or verticalization as I call it, but it's an 80-20 and it can be absolutely laterally leveraged. Thanks, uh, thank you Anir, that was very well explained. Uh, we have uh, some more questions flowing in. I love the participation here. Um, this, the, I think this is the fourth question we have. Uh, how's your design thinking training and approach linked to agile methodology? Okay, let me answer this interesting one. Yeah. Now, again, what's ideation without execution? How would we create value if not executed seamlessly? Now, this is where agile or what we term as value execution comes in to take the ideation forward, unifying it sem seamlessly to execute with finesse. Uh, that is our integrated holistic model. Um, and that, I think, is pretty unique. Um, we have time for uh, one or two more questions, Anir. Sure. This one yeah, let's is, go ahead. Uh, yeah, um, this one is, um, have you thought of implementing these concepts uh, in the services industry, such as customer services, IT services, restaurant services, et cetera? So let's pick on the restaurant services. And um, restaurant services has various operations. One is um, really a food chain that, let's pick on that, right? I just picked on food, I love food, so. Uh, who doesn't? So, um, so basically, uh, if you take that services industry, there are three, three or four elements to it. One is uh, they still have products, right? When we are getting into a service industry, okay, or internet-based services, let's pick Google, they still have products. It can be an advertising product. If I go to a restaurant, it's a product that you would like to order with uh, mayonnaise and cheese. So everybody has a product. And the experience of the product is crucial because at the end, though they are in services business, they have they have products. That's one aspect to it. Some de decomposing the services definition here. And then uh, serving, let's say they have a, let's say have a, let's say a very operations example. Uh, queuing of a Red Lobster restaurant in, in New Jersey. How do, we, how do you queue? How do you make sure that the queuing and the wait time? What is that? That's also services, right? That's, that's nothing but a supply chain operations optimization example. And that optimization of the services will only happen when the experience is nice, when people are feeding into information and then you're improving the services. So at the, at the industry 4.0, uh, servicification or servitization is nothing but taking the product and make it serviced well, if I'm using that as a right verb here. So, uh, so services is nothing but an experience. And services also have products, be it banking services or retail services, any kind of thing. And you wouldn't believe in the ecosystem right now, um, services is a profit center. It's no more a sales support, post-sales cost center, because services are high-paid individuals who are going up the ladder or going up the tower for Verizon and Cisco and repairing and providing good services. How that is possible? Maybe he or she is a five years of experience and going up the tower to fix it. He is servicing something, but he has an amazing experience in his iPad to search anything and curate it from the last 20 years of that, every repair history getting into that tower's knowledge base. So he or she doesn't need to be an engineer. Nowadays, you're hearing a lot that we don't need to even want to have an undergrad anymore because that servicification of services experience 
leads to a better service by the person. So of course, I mean, we have used it in every juncture for um, ser uh, servicification services of design thinking. So yes, design is critical to do a good job in services. Beautifully explained, Anir, again. Um, we are very close uh, to concluding uh, the session, but as I see, we have one last question, although sure. we will not be able to answer it, uh, uh, you know, for the paucity of time, but I'd still like to, you know, kind of take it up. So yeah, go ahead. What? It says, how do you get a design thinking mindset in a company dominated by traditional IT culture? So, um, of course, it's a concept of change management. That is, the answer is change management, but how do you do that change? Um, the word that I will use is, is called disrupt. So you have to pick one program, uh, which automatically tells me that this organization doesn't believe in the journey, they believe in the output. Right. So once you believe in the output, you have to show an output. Right. So if there are, let's say, n number of leaders who are, whose thoughts are similar, then it's very hard uh, code to crack. Right. To move them from an that mentality to a design-led mentality, a regular uh, waterfall mentality to a design-led mentality. But I think what happens is in this era of 4.0, out of those n number of leaders, one will question and say that. Are we falling behind the competition? And once revenue starts falling down and it becomes stagnant or straight or plateau or going downhill, they have to embrace design. That's the method to the madness. And once one prototype comes out in this formation, it becomes a repeatable history because the remaining leaders, they're not fools, right? They all believe in numbers. They all believe in water for the last 40 years. But once they see the, oh, okay, that operation section or that finance section really doing very good because they have embraced something new in the ecosystem. So it's basically threefold. One, result, show, show versus tell. Second, uh, believe, belief in it, the belief system that you will inculcate, change management. And third, how do you take a cell with mentality, not sell to mentality. So somebody has sold this pacemaker to that uh, person who needs to increase his or her uh, heartbeat, right? So if you go and say, hey, open your heart, I, I will push this pacemaker into you. No one will buy that, right? That's sell to, typical IT services or services. And sell with, okay, you know what? When you get this, you will exact, your pulse will never go down. But if it goes down, you will have this many dashboards to know what should you eat in the next seven days. Sell with. And that's, and that's where I think a change comes. And change, a change will come when you have one disruptor in the, in the organization. And uh, rightly put, uh, employers is uh, fantastically positioned right now to bring in that disruption in Industry 4.0. Uh, with that, we have, uh, uh, you know, uh, we have come to uh, an end of this uh, webinar. I really hope that uh, uh, this was of value to you and you enjoyed it uh, as much as we uh, loved uh, delivering it to you. Um, so uh, in paucity of time, uh, we will conclude here. I would like to thank everyone for joining this webinar the recording of this webinar will be emailed to the attendees shortly and uh, we hope to see you at the workshop soon thank you very much thank you